Hey guys, uh, so you may have seen these lovely folks around. Floats, that's uh, like folks, but with an extra. Floats. You got it. Yeah, float, float. You got it. Uh, so they've been floating around our church, uh, and this is Aaron Warmbier, and she is a uh, board member of Love Thy Nerd. This is Matt Warmbier, and he is one of the founders of Love Thy Nerd. And this is Luke Filippiak, and he is one of their digital marker, digital outreach uh, coordinators. Uh, we also have Bubba from Texas, believe it or not. He flew all the way in from Texas. He's out there in the lobby, if you guys probably already met him. Uh, but they have brought in a whole host of people uh, to tell us about how we've partnered with them, the things that they have going on. Uh, and so one of the questions that I want to ask you guys, and maybe some of the other people are wondering, is your mission is to love and to reach people uh, with the love of Jesus, but particularly nerds. Why nerds? Yeah, uh Jesus went to the marginalized and he went to the outcasts of society and typically the nerds and nerd culture are looked down upon not only by the church but society as a whole. So uh, growing up I, I was a, a nerd long before I was a Christian and you, you felt like an other, you felt like an outcast. Uh, so growing up and then becoming a Christian, um, there's a, a huge need to reach this, this people group that they wouldn't step foot in this building. They wouldn't step foot into other churches. And typically, if you mention words like Jesus, pray, or church, like it's an instant, like, no thank you. I'm, I'm not interested in this conversation. So uh, there's a giant need to reach this, this culture, this group, um, and meet them where they are. So uh, that's what we do. Um, and, and he's kind of touched on this a little bit, but um, nerd culture really is demonized. And um, we, we go to these comic book and gaming conventions where there are um, tens of thousands of people, you know, 60, 80,000 people coming to all gather around their passion for nerd things. Um, and outside the conventions, you will find Christians um, holding up signs of condemnation. And that has been their experience, showing up at a convention and being yelled at on the way in for the things that they love and the things that they care about being called demonic or evil. Um, and that's their experience with Christians up until this right. point. And they, they hear a lot of these nerds, like D&D nerds, have lived through the satanic panic of the 80s where like, they, were, they were told that they were wrong and bad and how dare you. Like, you're doing evil things, you're wasting your time, you're lazy. So the, they feel pushed out, they, push, they feel pushed away from the church, from society. Um, just like a quick story, like we were at Dragon Con in Atlanta and like there were these protesters outside uh, protesting people going and, and role playing a game that's not real. Like they're not doing a seance, like they're, they're playing a game and they're holding these signs up and yelling at moms who are bringing their daughters like their, their little daughters into this convention saying, you're sending your daughter straight to hell. How dare you do this to them? So we want to step into this and be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, <laughs> Jesus loves you. Well, so you guys talked a little bit about, like, this is philosophically, so you guys are about showing the love of Jesus to nerds and nerd culture. Uh, and you kind of mentioned you go to conventions, but, like, how do you actually do this? Like, what is it that you guys do? Uh, so going to conventions is just one of the things we do, and we, uh, we look at it as an actual missions trip. It's not, and it's a, it's not a short-term missions trip. It's like a, a long-term missions trip, and I like looking at it that way because um, one of the things we do is we, we have these relationships with game developers, game publishers, that they're at these conventions to like promote their games, sell their games, like create awareness about their company, um, and a lot of them um, are just like school teachers or like they have a regular day job, but you know creating games is their passion, and so they're there by themselves. And uh, one of the things we do is we're able to take a team in order to volunteer in some of these booths uh, to just help like promote the game, demo the game, like relieve them, you know, hey, go take a break. Because they won't take breaks. Yeah. They, they'll work 12 to 15 hours in their booth trying to get their stuff out right. to the people. Yeah, so just one of the simple things we could do is just put competent, like excited people to promote this game. Um, and it, it goes a long way for them because 
we go we try to go over and above we try to bring them coffee we try to like restock shelves if they've got you know shelves of games um, and it, it's just loving and serving them first of saying like this is how you know this is how I believe Jesus would love you of just like here to serve you um, and so we try to do that uh, we have relationships with all sorts of different you know sizes of different companies different publishers uh, but we also go to just like play games with people a lot of people one of the, what the cool ways to look at this is there's a, a lot of people that go to these to like play games or to talk to other people about something that they love and so they're coming ready to talk to you and so it's just a, a really easy way to connect with people based off of stuff we love too and so yeah, and, and that's like the biggest thing. And we'll go to these conventions. We'll go to local game shops. We even have a, a game night here at Sojourn that uh, it's for the community. It's not just for you all. So we want to bring these people in. And really, we build relationships with these people. And it's never like a, especially at our game night, like, I'm not going to stop it halfway through and be like, all right, time for our five-minute devotional. Like, it's really about like building the relationship so we can speak real truth into their lives. And that might take six months a year, but because we become safe people who they know aren't just looking for a way to, to get them saved, like we're remembering that they're people and they're not projects. So conventions, game nights, we have seven different podcasts, Luke streams on Twitch uh, five days a week, uh, just building these relationships because when we meet them at conventions, we encourage, encourage them to meet us online, play games online with us. We set up uh, specific days in the month where we we play whatever game is popular because we can build relationships and they will find out that we're Christians and what we're, they'll find out that Jesus loves them, but we're safe and we're available and we're willing to listen to them struggle with whatever. But like, we're gonna play games with you because we have this commonality in, in it. And the, um, the other arm of what we do is just good content. We, we want to um, equip and empower people to be able to do this on their own. So if you're, um, you know, we've, we've talked a lot about trying to reach people where they are if they're not believers, but if you are a believer and you're a nerd, um, to, to kind of give you that permission to use what you love to reach other people for Christ. And so um, we try to produce good content that will help you do that. We have, um, you know, podcasts that you can listen to. Um, and we also have a lot of articles online that help you think Christianly about um, the last Star Wars movie that you watched or that new board game that just came out. Um, uh, just ways to start conversations and also to consume content thoughtfully and um, to, to use that to build your own faith and also to reach out to other people. Um, we've also partnered with a curriculum company to put out curriculum to help churches to um, reach the youth um, with you know, using games and using the things that they love to do uh, to, to learn about Christ. So you guys, you have all these different ways of reaching people, uh, but specifically you've talked about like there are two separate ways that you have an approach. You have an approach for reaching Christians, Christian nerds, yeah. and you say that's like one way that we do this, and then you say there's kind of like a, a second approach to non-Christian nerds. Can you kind of explain why you have those two approaches and why that's so important? Yeah, uh, we definitely want to be the bridge between nerds and church because typically, like I said, the nerds will hate the Christians, and the Christians won't understand the nerds and you know think they're lazy, wasting their time, etc., um, so there's this, this gap between them. Um, so we go in and we have uh, an approach that we're not going in guns blazing. Like even like when we kind of like when, when they ask us what we're doing, like, hey, we come in here like we want to we want to love and serve our nerdy neighbors. Like that's why we're doing this. And if we find out that they're Christians, like we'll go a little bit more. Hey, we want to be the love of Jesus to nerds and nerd culture. So we really want to be able to like I'm not hiding the gospel from them. But I like I said, like it's if they hear Jesus or church or pray or any of that, like that's an instant wall put up. They're done with the conversation. They're not going to do it. So it's kind of a, a separate way we're going to go. So we're going to welcome everyone in. Our communities are, are, are open for, for Christians and they're open for non-Christians. And we're making it a safe space for both of those groups. So if you are a Christian, we're gonna ask you not to post prayer requests on the main page. We're gonna ask you not to post your Christian memes because what that's going to do is these non-Christians that are coming in, that's an instant no thank you. I don't want any any part of that at all. So we make it a space where hey, we're nerds, 
We can embrace nerd culture, movies, comics, games, whatever it is, and that's our commonality. And that's when real relationships can happen. So we can, we can teach the Christians how to love these nerds better. And we can teach these nerds that not all Christians think that they're worthless, wasting their time, whatever. That's great. Uh, one of the things that we talked about previously was this idea that when you think of nerd, like the kind of cultural context around that is generally it's a guy. Generally, they're lazy and... They're not kind of like maybe detached from reality, and they're childish. That's why they're playing these games or video games. Uh, but you guys have shared a lot of stories about running into people who aren't like that uh, and don't fit that context. And I was just wondering if you guys could share some of those stories about the people that you've run into. I think it's imp important to say right off the bat that um, no matter what you fit, like you are loved by Jesus. And so regardless of whether you feel that um, maybe you're like, oh, that's actually me, you know, like uh, I, I did lose a job because I played video games too much or, you know, whatever, like you are loved by Jesus no matter where you are, who you are. But it, but it isn't just people that are, you know, obsessing over video games are, um, you know, lazy. In fact, mostly it's not. Mostly it's people that like game developers who are hardworking, um, you know, dreamers and entrepreneurs who are trying to put out the next big video game or tabletop game. Um, you know, it's it's teachers and you know um, pastors and all of us. I mean, we're nerds. Um, but yeah, do you want to tell a story about your video game? Oh yeah. Um, we um, just to like give you kind of a, a face to. Uh, the people that we're meeting, I think that um, it's it's good to see that this partnership, like we really want to partner with churches and we really want to partner with families. And so one example of somebody that we've met right here in this church, um, there's, there's a, a teenager in this church who just was really struggling with uh, their faith, um, whether or not they really believe these things that their family believes. Um, and I think where the partnership comes in, like, He's got some great parents, some awesome parents that are willing to say, like, ask those questions. Those questions are good, and, um, you know, don't shy away from your questions. Um, he's got a youth group that took him under his wing and said, ask those questions. Don't shy away from those questions. And he's a part of Love Thy Nerd, and he jumped in our online Discord, and he started asking those questions. And he hooked up with Luke, and he hooked up with our community moder moderator, Tyranny, and he asked those questions, and he found that it was a safe place to not believe. It was a safe place to have some doubt. Um, and at home and at church and an LTN. And through that partnership all together, he told his mom just recently, um, I believe Jesus is Lord. You know, I've had my questions answered. And uh, so like that, I think, really speaks to what we want. Like we want, if you don't have parents that are supporting you, we want to support you. If you don't have a church that is supporting you, we want to support you. Um, but that, that teamwork of, of, you know, and, and I, I will say it's not only Luke or myself or Aaron or any of our our staff or volunteers that like made those connections with him. It's like there are people who are, are Christians in this group who are empowered to love and answer questions and listen. Mm -hmm. um, we we run into a lot of this at some of the conventions. Like one of the the developers, uh, game company workers that we met, um, definitely wasn't a Christian. Hated Christianity, uh, didn't want anything to do with it. But we just listened, and we, and we and we talked, and we laughed, and we played games. And time went by, and she's like, "Hey, my wife's going to be at this convention. Like, let's go to dinner." What? And like trusting us that she knows our hearts, she knows that we're Christians, but trusting us like with her family. And so we went out to dinner with them, and and her her wife was just kind of like, "Why are you doing this?" What are you doing? What do you believe? Like, really just trying to drive, like, she wanted answers, and she wanted them right now, and, like, Bubba and I, like, just kind of, we, we answered thoughtfully, lovingly, carefully, like, treated her like a person and not a project, and got her story, like, growing up, she was a Christian, went to a camp, wanted to be a camp counselor, but because of, like, her sexual orientation, she was damned and pushed away and, and an outcast from the church, and then hated the church, didn't want anything to do with it. So it's a slow go, and, like, I love those people. 
and I want them to know Jesus loves them. Uh, I have an example of there's, like Matt said, I stream on Twitch. If you don't know what that is, it's just a live streaming service where most people play video games, tabletop games, or like even just chat. Like there's streams where people just talk to people because people go there to look for community. And so uh, we tried to do that. And through that, uh, I met, a while ago I met a friend. Uh, we connected over a video game and we, we just spent time night after night just playing games together. Um, we went through some changes in our life, uh, me and Asia, uh, moving and changing churches, all sorts of stuff. So I, you know, there was a little bit of a disconnect. But recently, this guy reached out to me again and was like, hey, I've been watching you, what you're doing with LTN and uh, From the Shadows. Uh, and I, uh, I'm just really encouraged by seeing like what you're doing with your faith and like using that or, like using games, using your nerd side to, to tell people about Jesus, to just love and serve people, even just through the internet. And he's like, you've challenged me to rethink, you know, like my faith and be more open and honest and, you know, like have that more present in uh, like when I'm playing games with people or streaming or whatever. And so that's the, that's, you know, that's the other side of it of like just being that bridge, being that encouragement and empowerment uh, to people to be able to do that in their culture or in their communities. So it's not just, oh, how big can LTN get? But it, it's how can we like multiply? How can we set up people for success to be able to do that and reach people that we wouldn't be able to reach? And so. Yeah, can you talk a little bit more about that? So you, you've said like, hey, look, this is not the LTN show. This is not, the point of this is not to grow this ministry to be this megaton thing where we've got our name on everything and we're showing up at all these Christian conventions, but you're like, we really want to empower local communities to do what we do. Why is, why is that your approach? Why, why is that the way you guys want this to work? Uh, we, like I said, we don't see it like there's people that we're not going to be able to reach, you know, like there's, there's big streams out there. There's tiny streams. There's other ministries out there and we all have different approaches. Um, and we're reaching different people in different communities. And so we find that really important. We want to create that resource of like to empower people. Aaron said it earlier of like, we want to train people up so they can reach others like via, uh, different resources, different articles, like, Think of anything nerdy. We probably have an article on it that you can find and share with someone. Um, and so we do things like uh, one we're working on, we do the game night here uh, every third Thursday. That's a quick plug. Uh, uh, 6.30 to 9 yes. p.m. <laughs> Eastern Standard Time. And uh, we want to create, we want to be able to take that, turn it into a resource to set other people up to do that in their communities. Uh, we, did, we put on a little thing called the Minecraft League um, where we, we brought a bunch of people in all different ages, all from all over the U.S. Uh, and, inter and Canada and internationally, probably. Um, but we did this thing, if you're familiar with like Lego Masters, where people form teams and we gave them a, a topic, basically, of like, all right, build something around food. And then all these teams put something together. We had a panel of judges, uh, but in the end, um, you know, there was a clear winner. We did all this stuff to just bring together community. But then not only did we put on that event, but we created a, a free resource for people to do that in order to reach people in their community. Yeah, we pack it up and let them use what we've created. And honestly, like, that's one of the stories we didn't mention is that Minecraft League bringing people we met, a woman we met at a convention who was going through a hard time, a, a very hard time, and we just sat, loved, ran her booth for, for a while, like first time game developer. Um, she had her kids enter the Minecraft League and they ended up winning. And now she's like this, this a big proponent and advocate for Love Thy Nerd, not a Christian. Definitely hated Christians early on. Now, because of this relationship, she's more willing to listen, to accept, and to know that, hey, actually, like, Christians aren't that bad. They, 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 I know some good ones. <laughs> Well, so you guys have a lot going on. You've got a lot of stuff going on, streaming, conventions, locally. Uh, if people here at Sojourn wanted to join you guys and be a part of what you're doing, what's the easiest way? What, how can we 
join in with you guys? I mean, the easiest way is just to participate in what we're doing on social media. You, probably most of you are already on social media. Um, it, I mean, that's that's why YouTubers are always saying, you know, smash that, <laughs> like and subscribe, um, because it's true. It really helps us to get the word out to people that we wouldn't be able to reach otherwise. If you're liking what we're doing, if you're following what we're doing, if you share what we're doing, it really does help us. And I hope you found find some value in it yourself. Um, but we are on Facebook, um, we are on YouTube, we are on Twitch. You know, we are Discord. On Discord. Like We've got TikTok. Uh, sort of uh, uh, yeah uh, some of these other things that we were talking about like different conventions like we we take missions trips and you're able if you have any like remote interest in it like we take teams we need people to volunteer in some of these booths um, so the next one coming up is Gen Con it's in Indianapolis in uh, August, August. Um, we got people signing up for that so if you're interested you can come talk I, to I will say there is it like we say volunteer there's a cost because we need to be able to you know uh, eat and have a place to stay and badges and things like that. So yeah, if you want to know more about that, you can talk to us out there. Um, we'd love for you to join us. But also this October in this very church, we're doing a thing called LTNCon where we're going to bring speakers uh, in here, breakout speakers, uh, just to teach you all how to love and serve nerds better. Uh, and if you have any interest, I'd love for you to be here. It's October 14th to 16th. Uh, we'll have gaming in the evenings where you can build those relationships. We'll have speakers and breakout speakers during the day. We'll have some of our relationships we've built with these game developers. They'll have booths here like so you can meet these people that we, we've grown to love and to, to show them love. So, uh, and also, like, uh, there, are, there are six staff members right now. Uh, most of us are doing full-time work at part-time pay. So uh, we raise support. Like, if that's something you want to be a part of, let us know. We'd love for you to partner with us. Also, we, uh, if you just want to keep up with what we're doing and, uh, and pray for us, we also yeah. have a monthly newsletter that goes out. Um, I think you could just go to lovethenair.com well, slash newsletter. Well, you can sign up in the, yeah, lobby. There is an so. iPad out there that you yeah. can sign up. Or just talk to one of us, and we'll get you set up. All right. Well, guys, thanks so much for being here. Appreciate you guys sharing with us, and thanks for all the work that you all do. So yeah. give, them up. give it up. Give it up.